Hey, what's up you guys? It's Nicholas Lionrider, and welcome back to our Planet Zoo Let's Build of the Roger Williams Park Zoo. I'm joined again here with Lemur. Say hi. Hello. Uh, since the last episode, I made a few minor tweaks to some things after visiting the zoo twice this week, actually, for uh, uh, authenticity's sake. So uh, I fixed the stable. I understood what the actual stable shape is and the colors and stuff. Uh, through a mixture of going to the zoo in person, like I mentioned, and taking my reference photos, and I use some of those for the build we're going to be doing today. But I also discovered that I can go on Google uh, Earth and actually get a 3D view of the uh, buildings, which is really useful for any time I can't really see like a 3D view or uh, from the top down on Google Maps. Uh, in addition, over here, I don't know. If <laughs> Um, I, I did this. I did fix the Pepsi machines to actually be the Pepsi machines, but you're gonna be disappointed. They changed the Pepsi machines again. <laughs> no. So I thought I was accurate. I made these Pepsi machines. Um, I posted the uh, link to this blueprint in the last video as well. But they actually changed this whole pavilion from the last time I changed. So now I'm probably gonna have to change that. But they added a, a little like. Um, it almost looks like a bus stop, but it's like a little alcove area, and there that's where they move the map, and there's a couple of benches and stuff, and it's just like a nice little cozier area. Uh, they removed this map over here, so I'll probably have to move that, like I said, over to that location. Uh, I did fix the, the <laughs> uh, roof, so that is now changed, and I also off-screen um, changed some more of the behind-the-scenes uh, backstage buildings. So they have this kind of like greenhouse area off to the side that I think it acts as a power source and stuff. So that'll be added as well. But today we're going to be working on the cheetah exhibit. So that'll go over here in this area. And I think we might be able to get, uh, there's a small little gift shop area as well as a cotton candy stand. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Yay. So welcome back to our next episode. So, uh, like I said in the little intro, I did a few little changes since last time. But we're uh, starting the cheetah exhibit now. So, what I'm doing. Are you doing... already fighting with the paths? Yes, immediately. <laughs> <laughs> immediately. And I fight with the paths a lot for, for a little bit. Now, for this episode, I'm doing 16 times speed. So, it's actually twice as fast as normal. Um, just so that I could, like, condense everything into, like, the like, half hour format that I'm doing. Um, so I have gotten relatively better at the path system, believe it or not, um, but it's still a, a little off. Um, so a few uh, little updates since last time. So I did visit the zoo, like I said, um, at the, at twice. The twice in the intro. And you know how last episode I said I don't know what the name of the Watusi or the Wildebeest is? No. So the will oh you don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember that actually I don't oh. remember. Um, well the wildebeest name is Skittles. <laughs> okay, obviously. And the Watusi are named uh, Sriracha and Wasabi. They're two males. Mm -hmm. And that's in addition to Samantha, Zipper, and Tundra, the zebras. So that's like that full exhibit. And I also at one point uh, when we get to the actual cheetahs. Uh, I found out their names, so I'll talk about them later. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually using a bunch of fonts that I got off the uh, workshop. So these are called the Bryce's fonts and very useful for uh, getting kind of like middle of the middle sized text for like uh, signs. Now in this specific situation, I actually just nor use the normal signs. But I use the ricey signs a lot um, later down the line uh, for like other signs when I get to the gift shop area. But I also use them right here because I'm trying to like write like kettle corn and popcorn and that, like that sort of thing. This sign is just like for a little, there's a little concession stand after the zebra exhibit, like towards the gift shop. There's like a cotton, it sells like cotton candy and popcorn and that sort of thing. It's just like a little place. It's overpriced. I never go there. <laughs> but, uh, wow. so, so what I originally thought was there was popcorn on the sides of this sign. I'll pull up like a picture of the sign, um, what it actually looks like on like Google Maps and stuff. 
I thought it was popcorn at first because I don't know I wasn't like paying attention or something but no they're actually it's like a like a deer and a like a giraffe so I just quickly changed that at the end because luckily once again they had those nice um, I don't know what they're called like <laughs> I don't know just yeah. some, they're just animal signs I don't know <laughs> okay um, yeah, definitely not the most informational uh, video here. Here we go. Here, here's yeah. me messing around with a giraffe for a little bit. Oh, I remember watching this in real time. It was painful. Yeah. Because well, isn't this part like sped up even more than you usually speed it up? Yes. So, like I said, basically what I did was I sped it up eight times, fe uh, eight times speed, which is what my normal uh, rate is. But then I sped it up again eight times. So, like this is actually like 16 times the speed that it normally is. Just because mm -hmm. I do a lot of redundant stuff in this area, so I'm yeah. like just just for the pathing and stuff like that. Oh, like, I know it's just it it's moves around a lot. a lot. Um, I'm just grabbing all the like wooden pieces and stuff that like I made in the previous area just to uh, get everything right. So for yeah, this area, this is a whole different part than the before. Yeah. So this area is the gift shop area. Like I said, it's like a little stall. I wish there was like a, a gift shop stall area that I could do, like just an individual like thing that acts like a gift shop, but it's just a small object. Uh, don't mind that. I'm just grabbing wood from the rest of the build. <laughs> but unfortunately, I can only use I, I can only get the gift shop thing if it's like an actual like building. So this mm -hmm. isn't a functional gift shop or anything. It's just kind of the stall area. But like I said. These Ricey's fonts, fantastic. I, I, I love using them. And another thing that I love is, uh, like I was saying in the last episode, I was actually able to recreate this sign as, like, very accurately to how it is in the in real life. Because those mm -hmm. that zebra and giraffe are just perfect for what I needed. Yeah. And along with the Ricey's fonts, I was even able to get, like, the kind of, like, uh, gradient on the actual text that says Zufari Outpost. So that was like really awesome. And I think I might even put that on the workshop just because it's such a nice sign. <laughs> yeah, um, it is really nice. Yeah, like so you can see here, like I got like that nice oh. gradient. It looks even better like from far away. But yeah, it looks really nice. So then I, I just, you know, copied it around, added the little outpost thing. And then there you go. There's pretty much the full sign. I just have to adjust a few things and change the gradient again. And uh, that's that's pretty much it. That's the sign. So I put that in there. Now the other thing that is part of this gift shop is normally uh, it's only available during summer seasons. So the rest of the time it's basically just an empty gazebo that just has like a couple of like shelves or like um, storage units, like lockers almost. So I just quickly mm -hmm. put those together. And then the reason I sped it up so much was most of this episode otherwise would have been foliage. And I feel like everyone has <laughs> kind of dealt with me. Play it. Yeah, it's just, you know, the same process I've always done. You know, put the, put the yeah. trees in the ground to make bushes. Uh, I'm using like elm trees and ash trees, oak trees, beech trees, basically I just keep, you know, using those trees just because they're like the the right height. I really mm -hmm. wish I could use the oak trees, but they're just way too short and they just don't look right. Like the branches are basically at like the uh, Planet Zoo human eye level, and so like it just makes no sense to <laughs> use them practically. Like just in real life, oak trees and stuff are just really tall, so I don't know why they made them so short in this game. Mm -hmm. So here I'm actually getting around to making the actual exhibit now. So I start placing the fences down. And what I'm doing here is I'm just placing down the boards because I'm trying to figure out how it's actually oriented in the um, in real life. So I'm just uh, going around. Now the Z cheetah exhibit is actually connected up to the zebra exhibit. So there's a small area on the right hand side where the cheetahs can actually see the zebras and the zebras like start panicking all the time <laughs> in real life the cheetahs like hang out in that area because they just basically just look at the, the zebras the whole time moving around um mm -hmm. so it's actually really interesting like watching them in real life because 
you'll see the z if the cheetahs go to the other end of the exhibit the zebras will start moving into that area because there is food over there but like they try to avoid it whenever the cheetahs are around so it's actually really funny like watching that in action so right here i'm just uh beginning the kind of overview like overlook area um that you have immediately after the zebra area because the cheetahs have two viewing areas there's one at the beginning uh by the kettle corn which you're viewing right now and there's another down the path over by the Audad exhibit which is towards the elephant enclosure so right now i'm just trying to orient everything and figure out what i'm actually supposed to be doing <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. and then this is again, me being sidetracked. I really tried to not be sidetracked in this episode. I tried to do everything. It's definitely better. Than yeah. I, I tried to focus as much as I could, but I noticed this between the Africa sign and the like kettle corn building and the gift shop and stuff, there's a photo booth. <laughs> so <laughs> I basically made this little photo booth. Um, I found a little, one of the Indian carpets and, uh, just dyed it black to be like kind of like the like curtain almost and mm -hmm. in real life it's made out of bamboo and so i'm just kind of like making this little bamboo it kind of almost looks like an outhouse or something yeah <laughs> um but i basically just like orient everything i couldn't get like all the details i originally wanted just because of like the obvious limitations that i have i can't have like a small little photo screen or even just posters in general like i i tried mm -hmm. to do a poster later on but it just wasn't really working out too well so once again booth, yeah i'm trying to write photo booth and then at this point i just kind of realized why am i even bothering with signs anymore when what i really need are just text <laughs> on its own <laughs> so once again ricey's fonts to the rescue i'm just using the uh text to basically make a make a custom sign so i just write photo booth um it's it's a little big for what i needed it to so i eventually like go back to like adjust the sign wait do you write photo booth or you just write photo well i'm noticing now that like i wrote photo at first but <laughs> i'm writing yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so i had that little elephant poster because on the side of the real photo booth there's like little posters like showing like photos and stuff but planet zoo doesn't really have anything like that so I thought I liked the elephant originally, but I think later you see it, like, take it out at some point. But there you go. So there's the whole thing. It's this photo booth. I just adjust it a little bit, and then I move it into place. Now, Perfect. here's another thing. Is yeah, there goes the elephant. So once again, I get so meticulous with this detail. So they have a kind of, like, little circular cobblestone area with, br like, a brick wall. <laughs> behind it that like kind of makes an arc and so here i am making once again a a i guess curved brick pattern or something now mm -hmm. luckily this pattern is actually kind of repeated in a few little area like they're kind of like bench areas elsewhere and so it's used in a few other places so luckily i was able to copy this around afterward because it is a pain to make um, yeah. as you can see, I'm like struggling to like, cause there's no real easy way to do this to make it look nice. Cause it has to be like kind of asymmetrical and like, but also kind of not. Yeah. So like clean enough. I actually think like it like came out looking pretty good. And so, so you can see right here, I like copy it around to like another area where it is. Um, now what I'm noticing here is my initial proportions were based off the zoo map as, like if you remember using that one program where i overlaid the map on top of the actual planet zoo footage what was so, it like on top display on top display yeah oh i got it right yeah that is right um so i was trying to like figure out like what the right orientation is for like some of these things because it basically only outlined the exhibits it didn't outline individual things like sign posts and like if you had a bench or something and even on google maps and that sort of thing like you just can't get that much detail just because there's trees in the way that block that sort of thing 
so mm -hmm. I had to like just try and figure out like where the actual fence lines up and where alcoves are. So this isn't going to be. I'm, I've kind of accepted the fact that this is never going to be one to one, <laughs> but yeah. I'm trying to get it as close as possible, like from what I have. So right here, uh, you just saw I added a little sign. Uh, which I think I'm gonna eventually just copy around wherever it's used because they use the same sign format throughout the zoo. It just points you to like, you know, three areas of interest like near it. So in this case, it's basically the exit of the zoo and the zebras on one end and then elephants and bathrooms on the other end. Like, nothing crazy. More foliage too. Yep, and more trees. But like I said, I wanted to speed this episode up just because no one really cares about the trees and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. So here I actually eventually start getting around to the cheetah exhibit. Now, this was kind of fun because I kind of played around with a lot of the textures of the terrain. So when it came to the zebra exhibit, it was pretty much all sand. So it, there was nothing crazy about it. But the cheetah exhibit actually has some like interesting aspects to it. So it has a little bit of elevation on the sides, which, I, as you can see, I had to clean up from the zebra uh, stables in the back. But it also has little grass areas. But the interesting thing about cheetahs and other big cats is in zoos and in captivity, they have trails. It's actually kind of a, like a stress thing, which isn't very good, but it's a common thing with a lot of big cats in zoos. And so... If you go to the zoo, you can actually see where the cheetahs, like, walk and, like, where these trails are. So there's certain areas of the exhibit that are so, like, worn down that they're just the soil. And there's other areas that are, like, full full grass. Like, that for some reason, the cheetahs have never touched that area of the exhibit. And so it's kind of interesting how they only follow, like, certain circuits. And so... Now, luckily, the cheetah exhibit I found isn't as bad as some zoos where, like, some zoos have, like, a lion or tiger enclosure where they walk in a single horizontal line back and forth in, like, this giant enclosure. But the cheetahs at this zoo, like, at least have, like, a few different areas they go between. But, uh, and, and there's also four of them. There's four sisters. They were all, um, they were all, like, rescued or something. I, I don't know the full story. They're still kind of a recent addition of the zoo. Um, Roger Williams lore. <laughs> but basically, there were like four rescue sisters. Um, in the past, the zoos had cheetahs, but this used to also be the African wild dog exhibit for a while. It's actually kind of like bounced between cheetahs and wild dogs for a bit, because when I was a kid, it just had a single cheetah. And then that cheetah died, and then later on they got another cheetah. But then they said, no, this would be better used for wild dogs. So they got like five or six wild dogs. And so what they did was they uh, split off this entire exhibit into two kind of halves. And so you can see um, there's an area in the back. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll talk about the birds later, but basically it's just a little d design on the the windows. Which makes no sense if you're actually trying to view them, why you would put like things on the windows <laughs> to like, obstruct your view. They're not really that bad in real life, it's just kind of little things, but gotcha. I, in real life they're a lot smaller. But mm. it's, you know, I thought it was like a little detail that I thought was like kind of cute and to throw in there. Right. Um, but do you see this kind of like squarish half on the left side? So that was originally cut like cut off. They put a like chain link fence between that half and the rest of the exhibit, and that area was where the cheetah was. The single cheetah left, and then the wild dogs had the rest of it. Then that cheetah mm -hmm. died, and so they got more wild dogs. Like they could take over the full exhibit, and then a, like one by one, the wild dogs died, and now we have cheetahs again. So, <laughs> thank God. Yep. So now this is cheetahs again. So. I think even on Google Maps it shows this as like the cheetah and paint like African painted dog exhibit, but basically it just you know it kind of mm -hmm. works as a African predator exhibit that if if for whatever reason the zoo wanted something like hyenas or something one day, it would probably work just as well. Mm -hmm. So this building roof was kind of a pain because once again, I don't like the shapes of the roofs because they're like kind of like really weird octagon 
pentagon type like shapes and yeah. for some reason i don't know why i have like a reference image of this aspect but there's this weird like i i think it's a sound barrier for the cheetahs on top of this roof but only this roof for some reason and it's just this kind of like it's made out of brown wood and it's just sticking out of the top it doesn't cover the full roof or the other side of the roof or any other buildings around it it's just there what the heck yeah i don't know why but i'll, I'll show you a picture of what it looks like but put it um, right here <laughs> but i noticed it's just it that was too pit big so i went a size down with the wooden planks so i just copy that over i have a little pattern that i made and then i just move them down to be straight so that they're not going to be poking through again <laughs> So once that's in, in it, and I just, there we go. I just stick it on top. <laughs> I don't know what its purpose is, it's but so ugly. I know it's kind of weird, but I don't know what its purpose is, but I know at other zoos, like the, like a, the Bronx Zoo has a sound barrier for their tiger enclosure. So I assume that's kind of what it is because the highway is right next to their exhibit. So it might help with some sound cancellation. Mm -hmm. Not really. I don't, I don't think it's going to really make that big of a difference, but um that it, it's there so sweet once again i'm adding a, a little bit of foliage and rocks and stuff to the second exhibit exhibit viewing area path and so there's not much to be said about this area it's just a lot of copying and pasting basically around the path itself so what was interesting is i'm basically adding bamboo to this area now, this is where the zoo starts adding bamboo a lot for some reason. I don't know why. Like, they kind of periodically have little areas of bamboo mixed in with the natural foliage and trees. So I start adding those bamboo strips uh, a lot more in this area. And I think around this time, yes, I copy over the path area from the zebra area. And I mess around with it. I've, I, I've decided to leave in any mistakes I make in this series. Because even though it's probably not worth it in the long run, because I should, like, you know, I end up changing this stuff anyway, I think it's just worth, like, including just to show that, like, no one's, like, perfect in that regard. So, as you can see, I'm, like, basically copying this whole, like, um, little. I don't know. What is that called? I don't know what it's really called. Just like an what? overhang. Like, yeah, that's like <laughs> yeah. the overhang thing. Yeah. yeah. So basically, even though I messed with that path for a few minutes, I end up just changing the path entirely to fit the <laughs> the thing better. Which is which ma actually makes more sense because I think the the map of the zoo is wrong. Um, in real life, there's like actually a pretty like sharp bend in the path because yeah. I, I made sure to get um a, a lot of like video footage of what the path looks like for myself. <laughs> just because Blog. i knew well, yeah, just because google maps wasn't really providing like the detail i needed for like some of these things um mm -hmm. i also got a zoo membership so if for whatever reason i ever need to visit the zoo for like any specific things i'm able to just check that out now um i just took the plunge but i've also gone to the zoo twice already so if i go one more time within the next year i paid for it so <laughs> <laughs> pretty good deal yeah um like i said i wish there was more to be said about this it's just adding a lot of trees <laughs> yeah um oh i do if you see me like like going over the path it's because when i add the soil texture to the ground the heavy soil it adds like these rocks that pop up above the path same thing happens with like tall grass grass starts growing out of the path yeah, you can see it a little bit in front of the fences there. Yeah, There's so, so, so what I usually do is I go back in and, like, just go over the path itself with, like, sand or something that doesn't have any of that weird detail. Um, just that it looks a little cleaner. Too much detail. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, it's probably more accurate when it's dirtier like that. Yeah, I mean, to an extent, but, it, you know, I don't know if, like, there's much grass growing out of asphalt. <laughs> well, I meant, like, more like the soil with the rocks. Oh, yeah, like I'm a talking. couple of rocks. Oh, so this is actually a cool technique that I, I kind of like. So in the actual exhibit, they have chain link fence along this side, but this is also where the back uh, backstage area is for like the tractors and stuff, 
which I think I understand a lot better now and I end up fixing later, but to, I think, prevent the cheetahs as well as the guests from seeing anything, they kind of have these, like, sheets that go over the chain link fence on the other side so that you can't really see anything, and so I thought I'd just add those in. So the technique I'm using is using those Indian carpets, uh, like I said, and just dyeing them black and then just combining them. So the cool thing about the cheetah exhibit that I wanted to do is they have a lot of really cool rock work in the enclosure that they like climb on top of and stuff. So I wanted to recreate that the best I could. And that was the main reason I went to the zoo for reference because on Google Maps, the rock work is completely blocked out by the foliage and trees. Mm -hmm. So I had to like get like close up views of like what they look like. And rock couch. Yeah. <laughs> and so this one in the back, which is like the main um, rock formation, is pretty much like a couch shape. So it's kind of like a little bit asymmetrical, but for the most part symmetrical on both sides. And it has two areas where they can climb up and there's like a little area that they can walk on top of. And then this main flat area where I'm adding the little rocks to right now, there's like a heater and stuff. And I should also mention, these are all fake rocks. So this is actually like cement They're based. They're styrofoam. Well, <laughs> they're basically like cement formations that are just kind of sculpted to look like rocks. Cause this thing looks like the chair from Blue's Clues. <laughs> it does kind of, yeah. In real life, it, it's a little like smoother looking. I kind of want to fix it like to look a little bit better. It's just, I tried using the Planet Zoo rocks the best I could that fit. Um, another issue I had with the cheetah exhibit is getting the trees right. Like I said, I wish Planet Zoo had really tall trees, but all the trees in the game are like really short for some reason. Like they just decide to have like the leaves growing out like after three feet of trunk. So it like basically it's like two to three feet of trunk and then branches and then a giant hundred foot wall of like leaves which that's just not how trees grow so i so in the real zoo there's like really tall trees but i just worked on it the best i could mm -hmm. um that little rock area is like i was saying earlier the area where the zebras are kind of viewed and so they like to walk past that little area a lot so i kind of highlighted it a bit this is me messing with the paths again and look at how messy this path is <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I end up fixing that later and that's just a mess but what I start doing here is I once again add a little bit more of a backstage area so there's a small green shed which I assume is where they feed the cheetahs out of and this kind of like whole like I guess tractor trailer area which connects to the zebra enclosure and oh, the cheetah enclosure the yeah this is me just deleting everything to like fix that path essentially <laughs> Um, so I basically just fix that path, add the little shed. It's nothing crazy. It's basically just a green building with a little, you know, food area. So I didn't really focus too much on it, but that's pretty much it. Almost. I think I just kind of add some more trees and then I add the cheetahs in. Oh, here they so go. like I said, hey, th there's four, four girls. Their names are, I believe, Abby, Becca, Oh, uh, God, give me a second. Uh, are they all like white girl names? Avi, Becca, Jenga, and Jahari. Those are the, their oh, names. Oh, never mind. Yeah, I had, I I had to, a white girl name, yeah, I had to remember the other two. That was the only thing. Um, another shame that I had that I'm kind of disappointed with is the cheetahs don't really like the rocks as much as I would have liked. I think they can walk on them now after I delete this one rock. Uh, you're able to see it like get down. Um, give me a second. Well, I add some trees first and like dead, you know, those dead logs that they love so much at the zoo. There you go. So they're able to get down the ramp now. So I just basically added a little ramp in. So off camera, I want to fix that, uh, rock area a little bit so that like they can use them. But past that, that's pretty much it. So we should be getting to the cinematics any minute now. And there we go. So thank you for watching, and uh, next episode yeah. we will be uh, discussing the Audad exhibit. 
So stay tuned, and uh, that'll be another modded animal episode. So thanks Ooh, for watching, do we get everyone. To see more work? We do get to see more plunder work. <laughs> yes. So thanks uh, for watching, everyone. Goodbye.